How thick can thorium be? How heavy can you make helium? And how curvy can carbon be? The answer to all of these questions and more lie on the drip line. Let me explain. So what gives an atom its identity is its atomic number. It counts how many protons are in the atomic nucleus. Hydrogen has 1, helium has 2, iron has 26, and uranium has 92. Because the number of protons controls the number of electrons of a neutral atom, the number of protons indirectly controls the chemistry of the atom, and hence its chemical identity. But in the nucleus, you can also find neutrons. These have no charge, but don't let that fool you into thinking they don't do anything. The strong nuclear force acts between any pairs of nucleons. These are protons and neutrons. Without neutrons in an atomic nucleus, the strong force just can't hold up against the electrical repulsion between protons. So in some sense, neutrons stabilize the nuclei of atoms, and they also make them heavier. But it's not all neutrons and rainbows. You can't add as many neutrons as you want. There's an upper limit to, for example, the possible atomic mass of helium or carbon, and the reason is subtle. See, in principle, neutrons are only attracted to neutrons and protons via the strong nuclear force, and that might make you think that you can always just keep adding more to increase stability as the force is purely attractive. But it's not that simple because neutrons are fermions. What that means is that every neutron in the nucleus has to be in a different state, including spin and energy. So if you already have lots of neutrons, then any new neutrons you'd like to add must occupy the next highest available energy state. This requirement for the extra neutrons to have even higher energy effectively adds a repulsive pressure that tries to push neutrons out. And so there really is a balancing of forces. The strong nuclear force is fighting against neutron degeneracy pressure. And if the neutron degeneracy pressure is too big, you just can't add more neutrons. If you tried, they would just drip off, hence the drip line. And yes, this is the same thing that keeps neutron stars from collapsing into black holes.